Hello and welcome to Unlocking Unreal Engine. Let's quickly go over what this series is going to be. This is not a statement on the creators or their videos, but I wanted to show you something. I've typed in learn game development, Unreal Engine. I'm gonna go ahead and search. This is something that I think is very confusing for new game developers. If you type in learn game development, the first thing you see is UE5 create an island. Again, I'm sure this is a great developer and that's a great set of videos, but something you need to know going into game development is there are different fields and specialities. For example, in a normal context of game development, especially if you're looking to get a job, that first video series is going to be level design. It's going to be 3D modeling, hard surface, which is like objects. So like this water bottle or a lamp or organic modeling like plants and humans. And then if you look at the second one, I don't even know what that is. I just see that they're launching the engine. Again, this is not a commentary on creators or their thumbnails or their titles. I'm just aware of how confusing it can be when you get into game development. So for me and this series in particular, what you're going to learn is how to think about a mechanic and program the engine so you're able to do that mechanic. Get your ideas to a prototype level so you can actually play and use those mechanics. I am not a visual guy. In fact, I'm colorblind. However, as you saw, I'm sure there are great creators doing visual elements. If you're more interested in the visuals, that's the place to go. However, if you're interested in getting your mechanics working from a basic to a modular level, you're in the right place. Note that I will be using Unreal Engine 5.4.4. It's best to mimic the engine that I'm using. However, if you cannot, as long as you're using 5.x, you should be good to go. That being said, 5.5 is right around the corner and they are going to be drastically increasing the performance of the in-game lighting system. So we'll be going over to 5.5 and when that time comes, we'll use that as an opportunity to show you how to transfer your project from version to version. I have clicked on games on the left hand side and what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be clicking first person. I am a, I have a preference for first person games. If you want to do a third or a top down or things like that, maybe I can do an adjustment later on, but for now I'm going to stick with first person. On the right hand side, you'll see a couple of options like we've got blueprint and C++. Note that blueprint is technically slower than C++, but computer performance nowadays basically renders that slower irrelevant. You'll note that AAA companies actually avoid Blueprint because they have entire teams of highly trained professionals going in and optimizing to the absolute nth degree. But I promise you, if you are a solo developer, there is a very, very slim chance that you will ever even need that performance boost you would get from being purely C++. So for now, I'm not telling you not to do it, by the way. I'm just saying for now, let's focus on Blueprint. Uh, I'm going to leave the target platform to desktop. Uh, quality, I'm just going to leave it on maximum. I'm going to leave the starter content on, and I am not going to be using ray tracing. Uh, for my project name, I am going to do UUE for unlocking Unreal Engine, and I'm going to press create. After some loading, you'll end up here in the first person template level. Before we do anything, I'm going to make a couple changes in my project settings. You don't have to do these. They're preferential for me, but I want to explain it anyway. Uh, my tab is already open here, project settings. If yours is not, you'll want to go to edit and then project settings. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go up here to the search and I'm going to type in frame and down the list a little bit here to general settings. Uh, you'll see there's something called used fixed frame rate. I'm actually going to turn this on and put it at 30. This is not because I want my game to be limited to 30 frames per second. This is so when I'm developing or recording or doing anything where Unreal Engine is open, my computer is limiting it to 30 frames a second, so that way I'm not running Unreal Engine at maximum performance, making everything else drag. This is also a very good thing to do if you're on a low-end PC, and I'm not, and I still do it, so. 
However, asterisks, this will build. What I mean by that is if you are done making your game and you hit build, if this is on, it will build. It will stay at 30. So you have to remember to turn this off if you're going to build, but you can leave it on and making your game is going to take a while. So don't worry. And then one last thing I like to do is I like to go up here and type in motion and turn off the motion blur. And that's about it. And then I'm going to go back to my main screen here and hit control. Oh, sorry. Uh, and hit control shift S. And what that does is it saves all. And I'm going to be doing that a lot. If you hear me say control shift S, it's because I'm saving all. Now let's take a look at what we can see here. Uh, obviously in the big main viewport here, we have a viewport. It's the 3D space. It's where the game exists. And in order to navigate it, right click, that's my preferred method, and it'll immediately start panning the camera if you move your mouse. And then WASDA to move, Q to go down, E to go up. And for the most part, that's all you need to know about the viewport for now. On the right hand side, you'll see something called the outliner. The outliner is simply a hierarchy of all the things in your game, um, specifically in your level. I should be specific here. So for example, if I click on something like this, uh, you'll see first off that it gets highlighted, but second off in the hierarchy, you'll see that it was also selected. Uh, a good tip here is hitting the F key will bring me to whatever I have selected. This is good for if you place something and it disappears or you're like, oh, oh, you know what? Where did I put that directional light? Ah, there it is. Underneath, you should see a details panel. If you ever don't see something that I have, it's likely that I put it there and I forgot that I'm the one that placed it there. Um, and in order to find something that you do not have, go over here to window and you'll 90% of the time find what you're looking for. For example, I can literally close and open almost anything in here, including the 3D space, like viewports. I could just turn it off. Can you not turn it off? Okay, you can't you can't turn the viewport off, but you you get what I mean. There's a lot of stuff in here you can turn off and on. So if it's missing, it's probably in there. Anyway, the details panel just tells you things about what you currently have selected. We're going to be using it a lot, but I'll go into the details a little bit later. Underneath, I have an output log. You probably don't. I recommend finding a nice little corner to put your output log in. Um, again, window, output log, uh, because that's where we're going to be doing a lot of debugging and looking for errors. You can set yours up like mine if you'd like, or if you'd like to try something different, go right ahead. This is where I have to scare you a little bit. If you're completely brand new and you're watching this series, I'm going to be throwing you into the deep end. It's going to be cold. You're going to feel your adrenaline rush. But all of a sudden, you'll be like, oh, this isn't so bad. And if you're new to my channel completely, you're in luck. A lot of people say I explain things really well. So don't panic. And if it seems like I'm about to do something that you're not ready for, give it a shot. Just trust me and give it a shot. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this little green arrow up here. And what that's going to do is it's going to place me in the world wherever I have a player start. And it's going to let me play the game. You'll note I can walk around. I can jump. I can look around. I can even pick up this gun and go pew pew. But for those with the inquisitive mind, you're probably wondering why? Why are we able to do that? Is it just built into the engine? It's got to be coming from somewhere. Ah, and you're correct. It is built in, but not to the engine, to the first person template. The first person template gives us access to some pre-built code. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at it to understand where we're starting from. A new hotkey you're about to learn is control space. As you can see, it opens up your content browser. Now, some people like to have this open at all times. I personally like the one that hides and comes back because it just gives me more space on the screen until I need it. No matter where your content browser opens to, what I want you to do is go all the way to the left to content and click on content. And that will bring you to the highest level of your folder structure. Now, this is literally a folder structure. If I go from this content over to the left even more to this content and I hit right click, and I go to show and explore. This is your Windows Explorer and you're seeing it's literally your folder structure. However, we're looking at it in engine. But let's go back to what we were doing. 
Remember, it has pre-built code. Well, let's look. We have first person, first person arms, first person weapon, level prototyping, and starter content. I'll tell you right now, level prototyping and starter content have absolutely nothing to do with why we're able to walk around and stuff. It has to do with everything labeled first person or FP. Now, if you're brand new, this is going to be scary. What we're going to do, because we don't know any of this stuff, is we're just going to start opening things. Let's go into first person. We got blueprints, inputs, map. Okay. I'm going to open blueprints. And oh no, it got scary fast. We have first person character, game mode, controller, projectile, rifle, weapon, weapon component. Well, that's confusing, isn't it? the rifle supposed to be if we go back here wait didn't it have its own folder fp weapon oh fp weapon is where the components that make up the weapon exist but in first person under blueprints we have bp pickup rifle where all of those components come together so think of a blueprint as something that takes different components like meshes, which if you don't know what that is, a mesh is essentially a 3D model. I'll explain a little bit more soon, but the meshes, the audio, the materials, the thing that goes on the 3D model to make it look cool, and anything else where it comes together to work as an object. You heard me right, object. Remember that term, an object is a set of data that travels around together. So we have this blueprint here of the rifle, but in FP weapon, we have the components that make that rifle the rifle. So let's go take a look. First person blueprints. Let's open up the rifle. Oh my God, this is scary. That's a lot of words and a lot of lines. Oh good, there's something called the viewport. Ugh. Thank God. So let's go in. Yeah, we that's that's the rifle. Oh, look on the left. There's something called components. We have a skeletal mesh. When I click it, it highlights the whole thing on the right hand side under the details. Well, look, there's the mesh. There's the material. This is making a lot of sense. OK, so what other blueprints are in there? Uh Oh, first person character. Let's go to the viewport and oh yeah it's a set of arms on a camera makes sense doesn't it we also got this big capsule here and if you look we got a capsule component and it highlighted when i clicked it that must be our hitbox the thing that lets us know if we're on the ground if we can fit into spaces if we get shot but we can't just keep looking at components we are going to have to go to the event graph that big scary thing with all the lines and stuff which to navigate, by the way, you can scroll to go in and out, right click to move, left click to select. And I'm going to scroll in on the first person character here and we're going to see we have a camera input. Add controller yaw input, add controller pitch input. And as you can see, they've been commented left and right and up and down. We have a red box here and it says when triggered, do this or this. Or wait, no, it's doing both. So no matter how I move the mouse, it's doing both. No, it has to do with the incoming action value. If I move the mouse strictly up and down, the action value of X is gonna be zero. If I move the mouse left and right, the action value of Y is going to be zero. And of course, diagonal, we're gonna get a mixture of those input values. So technically, while both of these run, no matter what, the action value ultimately decides how the camera turns or pitches. You'll note when we go down here that the movement input is actually very similar. We've got when it gets triggered, add movement input for left and right and forward and back. The X value, if we follow this line, is going to be for the left and right and the Y value, if we follow the line, is going to be for the forward and back. However, notice that it needs something called world direction. And there's these green boxes that are right vector and forward vector. We're not gonna worry about what that means right now. 
but you can kind of understand. I mean, if it's left and right, it's going to use the actor's right as a reference point. And if it needs to go forward or back, it's going to use the actor forward as a reference point. And then with jump, we have started and completed, not triggered. And when it starts, you jump. When it completes, you stop jumping. We're not going to go into exactly what that means, but now you're seeing the very basic code that gets our character to move around. You might not fully understand it, but you're starting to wrap your head around it. Let's look at one last thing. I don't have a fun metaphor or way for us to get there, so you're just gonna have to follow me on this one. Somehow the game has to know that we're using the first person character. You might not have thought of this if you're new and that's perfectly fine, but it is an interesting question, isn't it? Because if I made another blueprint similar to this one, why wouldn't it choose that one? Well, let's take a look. I'm going to hit control space to pull up my content browser. And you're going to see something we have here called game mode. And I'm actually going to open that up like other blueprints. We kind of get a list here and under classes, you're going to see we have different things here and we're only going to focus on one for now. And we're going to focus on the default pawn class and notice that it's the BP first person character. So right now in our game mode, which for now just understand is like a system setting. Default pawn class is indeed first person character. In case you're curious about the name, a pawn is just something that can receive input and move around. Literally think of like a chessboard. And we're gonna end episode one here. My goal is to get these out a little bit faster than my previous upload schedule. If you're new, please like, comment, and subscribe. Also, I really encourage people in this series to leave a comment of things you may want to see. If it is going to align with things that I'm already planning on doing, and I feel confident in my ability to show you how to do it, I'll shout you out and we'll do it. Side note, my patrons have a much higher chance of getting their things shown on the channel. So if you are a patron, be sure to let me know if there's something you want to see in this series. Again, not a guarantee, but a much more likely chance. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode of Unlocking Unreal Engine.